our 23rd study from and about the Bible. Looking into the King James 1611 Bible and everything thereof. We've been looking at two trees, a good, healthy tree of life. The Bibles that come from Antioch. And we've been looking at a dead, barren, fruitless tree of the modern Bibles of Alexandria. Now today's study will pick us up in the Apocrypha. Now many Christians don't even know what the Apocrypha is. I grew up as a Polish Roman Catholic for 18 years until I got saved on April 25th, 1987. And as a Catholic, I didn't have a Bible. I didn't have a need for the Bible. The Catholic Church didn't want me to open the Bible. They didn't want me to study the Bible. And tradition would have the Catholic Church to say that there are a series of books called the Apocrypha. And we'll look at the Apocrypha now. We'll look at the truth. I'm not going to hide nothing. I'm going to give you all the truth. So the Protestants have removed the Apocrypha. No. They didn't. We have evidence that before Codex, the book, Sinaiticus, Sinai, the law, Roman Catholic Bible, and Codex Vaticanus, Vatican, book, Catholic, two manuscripts that modern English translations refer to do have the Apocrypha. So it would be a fib, a lie to say, well, you know, but before we say Protestants, I'm not a Protestant. One dear man in the ministry, gone home to the Lord, always proclaimed that Baptists are Protestants. They're in a protest. We're not. The Protestants are a cleaned up Catholic church with primary, basically, the same Catholic doctrines and teachings. And sacraments. They're just a Catholic by another name. I'm not Protestant. I'm a Bible believing, born again Christian. Old time Methodist. Baptist. Of the King James 1611 Bible. The Latin Vulgate, remember Vulgate meant vulgar, which meant common language which does have the Apocrypha but it had it as a separate segment after the 27 books so we're starting to see now the Apocrypha already it's in the Bible but it's not the Bible like some Bibles have maps the maps are not the Bible. Some Bibles have a concordance. The concordance is not the Holy Scriptures. Some Bibles have a dictionary. The dictionary is not God-inspired, God-breathed. And there are other things you will find in Bibles, extra usually at the back of the, of the Bible, sometimes in the front of the Bible. And I've seen all kinds of learning aids. But, they are not the canon of Scripture authorized by God, though they be in a Bible. Like our hymnals, in our church hymnals. Our church hymnals, many, many, many of the songs sung in churches today are scripturally unfounded, are wrong. The hymn book is not God-inspired. So we've got to look at 
Did God breathe? What's in our Bible? Or did Satan plant tares among the wheat? Jerome and Augustine together, while they had the Apocrypha sections of their work, yet they did not hold them to Scripture. Jerome and Augustine had the Apocrypha, but in their belief, the Apocrypha was not Scripture. I can put a dollar bill in my Bible. That dollar bill does not become holy. That dollar bill does not become authorized by God. You may get a Bible and there's nothing wrong with it, but they have a family tree. And you write in your family. That's not, that's not God breathed. As a matter of fact, you read what Paul wrote to Timothy and I believe Titus. We're not supposed to be looking at genealogies. So we got to learn to the fact is because it's in the Bible. We got to check to make sure, is it the Bible? And if you have a Bible that has the Apocrypha, it's there. But even those that put the Apocrypha there say, hey, that's not scripture. They recorded only 27 books as being from God, inspired by God. The Snod of Hippo, H-I-P-P-O, 393 A.D., was a big church council. Masses of leaders from all over the empire. They established that there were only 27 books in the New Testament. And the Apocrypha, not. A fourth snod of Carthage in North Africa, 397, four years later, perhaps one of the most noteworthy conferences produced with the canon of Scripture. It authorized that there were only 27 books in the New Testament and that the church had considered it so. So councils of churches, the early church history, and even men that put the Apocrypha in their Bibles, including the Protestants, it's there, but it's not God-inspired. Inspired means that God breathed the Word. Yes, man wrote the Bible. Agree. And I say the pen is the man, but the ink is the Holy Spirit. Shakespeare wrote of a pen of a man, but his ink was not of God. These Books or letters and writings of the Apocrypha were written by man. But there was no authority, no authorization, and no God breathed in the writings. Apocrypha means hidden. That's all it means, hidden. The Book of Enoch is a apocryphal writing, but it's not an illicit apocrypha. And if you got the video, I know you can't see it on live on Facebook, but if you got the video, I've got a list of the Roman Catholic, the Greek Orthodox, the Russian Orthodox, and the Coptic. Even they don't all agree.
I'd be careful with the bell and the dragon. Those are gods. The dragon, Revelation chapter 12, is Satan. Bell was a Babylonian god. Hypocritical writing also is the shepherd of Hermes, the epistle of Barnabas, which are in the Kodak Syndicatus, Sinai law, but are not in the Apocrypha. So there are even books in the Codexes that are not in the Apocrypha. And they're surely not in the authorized version. But I need to be careful. I'm going to read on. The Catholics do not comprehend this also. A normal Catholic grows up in his house with his mother and dad just topping it off of their head, expressing that Protestants took parts of the Bible out. And the book of Revelation says, you're not to add or subtract from the scriptures. True, the Protestants take out some of the Apocrypha. And the Catholics, now what? In the Protestant home, you're about to hear, yeah, the Catholics, they add some books to the Bible and they're talking about the Apocrypha. So the Catholics say, well, they take the, words, the books out of the Bible. And the Protestants say they take books out of the Bible. And I am telling you, there are books that are not authorized to be in the Bible. And you may find these books in your Bible. You say, well, Sally, would you read them? No, I wouldn't read them. I go right by them and read the, the 66 books of the Bible. The 39 of the Old Testament and the 27 of the New Testament. I would not. I would get myself a glue stick. I would glue all the pages of the Apocrypha together so you couldn't open up a single page. So when I finished Malachi, I wouldn't open up to this mess. I would open up to the New Testament, the Gospel of Matthew. I would make the Apocrypha of one page that I couldn't turn to and could not open. Now, if you want to read it, you got the right to go ahead. It ain't going to do you nothing with God. Between the historical end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament, we have been we have what has been referred to as the silent years and they are 400 years between Malachi and the Gospels. 400 silent years of God. God was quiet to Israel. There was nothing inspired by God. Nothing told by God. Hey, write this down. Put this down in writing. And up pops this mess. There was no revelation from God during this period of time to 400 years. And this is the time this crap shows up. God did not authorize. God did not breathe. God did not write the Apocrypha. And even, like I said, you can't see it in Facebook Live, but on the video, there are even names missing in these lists. As I said, one of them is Shepherd of Hermes and Epistle of Barnabas. And they're coming up with new ones. And listen, don't pay attention to Dead Sea Scrolls. Dead Sea Scrolls are dead. We've got the 66 books. There is no hitting books of the Bible. That is the devil trying to get you to look somewhere else. Now, 66 books. Now, the Apocrypha was in the King James Bible. 
And you can find it. Some King James Bibles will have the Apocrypha. And I told you, I would not buy that King. But if that King James Bible had it, it was the only Bible I could buy. Or had what I wanted in the Bible and it had the Apocrypha. I get my glue stick. I would glue all the pages together. So I couldn't open it up. I wouldn't tear it out because it may mess up the binding of the Bible. The Apocrypha was in Jerome's Latin Vulgate also. But they have been always separate sections. And when we say it, there's the Old Testament and there's the New Testament. It's not said, well, there's the Old Testament, there's the Apocrypha and the New Testament. Even the Catholics don't say it like that. But they are not treated as the Holy Scriptures because they're not Holy Scriptures. The Apocrypha is primary Jewish, ancient Jewish writings between 300 B.C. and A.D. 100. So about 400 years. When God did not speak, man wrote. I could write, listen, you see this? This is the report on the Bible. We are on page 51 of 116 pages. This is about the Bible. This is the truth of the Bible. But this is not God inspired. You can't find archaeology, cannot dig this up one day, the Lord tell you, Oh, look at this, a study in the Bible. Let's put it in the Bible. They can put it in the Bible in, in the future. But it's not scriptural. There are mistakes in this. There are errors. They are viewed by they are viewed as as canon, canon by the Roman Catholic Church at the Council of Trent, which was the counter reparation drive to Martin Luther and reformer. So the Council of Trent to fight the Reformation. At the same council, say, okay, the Apocrypha is canon. Why? Because the Protestants said it's not? The Puritans chiefly who stress that they should not even be contained within any of the editions of the Bible. The Puritans were against the Apocrypha, as much as they were against drinking and alcohol and prostitution. And Mother Church. The Puritans are the strict ones. Those are the ones that came over to Massachusetts. That America has lied in the history of the Mayflower and the Thanksgiving. And after Thanksgiving, they all went to bed and went and went to the store on Black Friday. That's nonsense. Latin Vulgate, which everybody is using, was in the or had the Apocrypha in the Latin Vulgate. Jerome himself did not believe it should be included in the canon of Scripture. Like I said. There are Bibles that got index pages, they got uh, cross referencing pages, they got index pages, they got concordance pages, they got map. They're in the Bible, but they're not canon. They're not the scriptures. They're not the holy scriptures. Miles Coverdale in the English Bible, the Bishop's Bible, that's the Bible in the King James line. And the King James Bible of 1611 all placed the Apocrypha in their Bible in a separate section. So don't ever say the King James did not have the Apocrypha. You'd be lying.
the Puritans, they are cited that all these traditions of the Roman Catholic Church, that they are aggressive to break away from. And guess where they are spread? Most of the apocrypha you will find some of the Catholic traditions that are not found in the Bible. The Puritans all the way from the beginning who maintain, this is what they maintain, get that out of here. Get that, we don't want, get it out. They enforced one edition within 18 years for the original one, 1611. In 1629, the Puritans got the King James Publishing House to drop the Apocrypha out of the Bible. Amen. Now, if you open up your King James Bible and you found the Apocrypha, you would not write the publishing company. You wouldn't care. And you write a letter or you call them up, the publishing houses wouldn't care. That's like the other day I called my insurance company and complained about something. Oh, we'll make note of it. Yeah, right. That's a simple, blow me off. Have a good afternoon. As soon as I hang up this call, we're going to hit delete. And we're not going to pay attention to what you say. But your call is extremely important to us. So in 1629, the Puritans got the Apocrypha out of the King James Bible. Some King James Bibles, it's in there today. I know I went early this year, I went shopping for a Bible at a, at a good, well-named bookstore here in Daytona Beach. And me and my daughter went through all the King James Bibles. Number one, words I could read. Number two, for notes. And then we were checking because sometimes if it says King James Bible, it's not the King James Bible. They mess with Acts chapter 7. That's a little slick move by the devil. It was not proportion of the Bible of Jesus and or the early church. No one occasion once is the apocrypha so recognized. Ever. And if you see, like I said, you're not going to be able to see this on Facebook. But if you see it, go ahead. The apocrypha is not in the Bible because Jesus, the apostles, and the Jews did not accept it, nor did they early. You can't find Jesus quoting from the apostles, uh, from the Apocrypha. Peter, James, and John did not did not quote from the Apocrypha. Even the Jews themselves said, Hey, this is not the Old Testament book. This does not belong in our canon. And it was written by Jews. And you will not find this in the Jewish Bibles. When the Jewish Bibles ends at 2 Chronicles, because their Bibles end at 2 Chronicles, not Malachi, there is no apocrypha. So the Puritans said, why is it ever, why is it ever quoted in the Bible? Show me one place you can find the Apocrypha quoted in the Old or the New Testament. And there is no quotations. If you have not read Maccabe Maccabees on Purgatory, you might question the Catholics get their doctrine on purgatory. Well, the entire doctrine of purgatory comes out of Maccabees, which is not the Holy Scriptures. But the Council of Trent, the counteract the reparation, it's in there. Well, why is it in there? Because one of the books supports our tradition. And denies what Jesus, Paul, and Peter 
spoke about. There are numerous historical and geographical inaccuracies in the Apocrypha. Sort of like the Book of Mormon. There are errors. There are places that no longer or have never existed. There are names that cannot be found on record. They're made up once upon a time. They live happily ever after. God makes no mistakes. God does not lie. And yet the Apocrypha and the Book of Mormon, inaccuracy, wrongness. Thus saith the Lord is absent from the Apocrypha. And if you were to read the Bible, and you will read the Apocrypha, you will see that both are not the same. They are as same as a pig is to a chicken when producing their young. A pig does not lay eggs, and a chicken does not give live birth. And the pig is to the Apocrypha, as the chicken is to the Bible. They're not the same. Pigs can't fly. Pigs don't have feathers. Chickens are a fowl. They are different. One is of God, and the other is of man. And even their own men, the people who are responsible for the Bible, the Jewish people, even the Jewish people say, that don't belong in there. Talk to a, talk to a rabbi. Ask them. Now listen, they may not believe on Jesus Christ and they may be wrong on, on, on things. But when it comes to the scriptures, God put the Jewish people in charge of scriptures. No. The Apocrypha is not canon. It is not authorized. It is not of God. 